Hey YouTube, as we know, the respiratory system does so many great things for us, such as respiration, helping us to speak, detecting odors, and so much more. But sometimes things can go wrong with the organs within the respiratory system, causing a respiratory disease. And today we're going to discuss some of those diseases, so please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and let's get started. Respiratory diseases are the third leading cause of death in the United States and can be divided into two main types, restrictive respiratory diseases and obstructive respiratory diseases. So we're going to talk about how restrictive and obstructive diseases are different from one another and some of those diseases that fall into each of those two categories. Restrictive lung diseases reduce pulmonary compliance and this is the lung's ability to stretch. It also reduces a person's ability to inhale. These diseases are usually caused by reduced alveolar surface tension and destruction of the lung's elastic fibers. Both of these together will hinder the lung's elasticity. Restrictive lung diseases will reduce a person's inspiratory, vital, and total lung capacity. It also will make breathing in and out more difficult for the patient. There are three main types of restrictive lung diseases. There is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This is a disease in which the lung tissue becomes inflamed and causes damage to the lung's elasticity. Now, when this tissue in the lungs become damaged, it then gets replaced with scar tissue made of thick bundles of collagen fibers. Pneumoconiosis refers to a group of diseases in one. These diseases arise from inhaling inorganic dust, such as coal dust, silicone dioxide, asbestos, fiberglass, and heavy metals. And these particles will permanently colonize the lung tissue, causing it to become inflamed. Now, neuromuscular diseases and chest wall deformites aren't technically lung diseases, but they do cause stiffness of the chest and weakness of the inspiratory muscle as a result of having the disease. Patients with restrictive lung diseases could experience symptoms such as shortness of breath, dry cough, sometimes with phlegm, chest pain, feeling extremely tired, gasping breath, depression, or anxiety. Obstructive lung diseases, on the other hand, usually cause some type of respiratory blockage. Obstruct means to hinder or block. These diseases increase airway resistance, which is the respiratory tract resistance to airflow. And this causes trouble with breathing out. A patient with an obstructive lung disease a lot of times will purse their lips and breathe out slowly, usually to reduce the lung compression and prevent air from being trapped. A lot of patients with this type of disease will also hyperinflate their lungs, and this is pretty much just another tactic for them to decrease the amount of air being trapped in the lungs. In an obstructive lung disease pattern, the residual volume, which is the amount of air that is still in the lungs after exhaling, will increase. Because again, in obstructive lung disease patients, it's hard for them to get air out. And in return, this will decrease the lung's vital capacity, which is the amount of air that can be exhaled from the lungs after a full inhale. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, is the most common type of obstructive lung disease. Over 16 million Americans have been affected by COPD and it's the sixth leading cause of death worldwide. This disease causes a persistent blockage in the respiratory airway. Though risk factors of developing COPD can vary from genetics or the environment you live in, most patients with COPD do have a history of smoking. Now, COPD has its own subtypes. There is emphysema, small airway disease, and chronic bronchitis. Emphysema is a disease that causes destruction of the respiratory zone and loss of alveolar surface tension. This results in abnormally large bronchioles. This subtype of COPD is usually caused by the resins from cigarette smoke. Resins destroy the lung's elastic fibers, of course, causing the lung to lose its elasticity, also known as its pulmonary compliance. And in very, very rare cases, a patient may have a genetic mutation that left them at high risk for developing the disease. In this mutation, the individual is lacking an enzyme that fights against other enzymes that damage the lung tissue. This results in the lung's elasticity to be destroyed at a very fast pace. Small airway resistance disease is a disease in which the bronchioles become narrowed and plugged with mucus. This disease usually follows emphysema. 
Chronic bronchitis causes inflammation of the bronchial tubes, which we can kind of tell how this disease will affect the lungs due to its name, bronch meaning bronchi and itis meaning inflammation. This disease causes the patient to reduce an excessive amount of mucus that must be cleared by coughing. This disease is mainly caused by cigarette smoke. The cigarette smoke impairs the lungs by increasing the size and number of the mucus glands and goblet cells. And this is what's going to cause an excessive amount of mucus being produced. Cigarette smoke also impairs the lungs by paralyzing the cilia of the respiratory epithelium. Now, this is dangerous because the cilia of the respiratory system functions to filter the air breathed through the nose. So if the cilia becomes paralyzed, an individual won't be breathing in clean or filtered air. Patients with COPD usually experience a mixture of all three subtypes. A patient with COPD will usually exhibit shortness of breath, coughing, excessive phlegm, prolonged exhaling, increased partial pressure of carbon dioxide, decreased partial pressure of carbon dioxide, cyanosis, and barrel chest due to lung hyperinflation. Treatment of COPD begins with smoking cessation, and due to carbon dioxide buildup, other treatments are done to increase oxygenation by using oxygen therapy or decreasing airway resistance. Now, lung transplant therapy is also an option for patients that experience severe cases of COPD. Asthma, another obstructive lung disease, affects 7 to 10 percent of the world's population. In asthma, the airways become hyperresponsive to a trigger. Now, as far as triggers go, a trigger can be anything such as mold, pollen, dust mites, exercising, infections, air pollutants, or drugs like aspirin. Now, as a result of being exposed to the trigger, three events will occur. First, the airway of the lungs will constrict. Then the airways will become inflamed. And lastly, an excessive amount of mucus will be secreted. Each of these responses will cause resistance in the airways. In some cases, a patient may still have mildly inflamed airways, even without being exposed to a trigger. Asthma attacks occur in episodes. Now, how much these attacks occur does vary amongst individuals. Asthma attacks consist of shortness of breath, wheezing while breathing in and out, and coughing. Most attacks are acute and the patient usually recovers their normal pulmonary function. Now, that always isn't the case. There are some cases in which a patient can experience a consistent obstruction of the airways. This is a condition called status asthmaticus. Acute asthma attacks are treated through bronchodilators to reduce airway resistance. Now, these bronchodilators will bind beta-2 receptors that are found on bronchiolar smooth muscles. This will give relaxation to the airways. Now, long-term asthma is usually treated with anti-inflammatory steroids to reduce inflammation of the airways. Of course, by doing this, this will prevent or decrease the frequency of attacks. Lung cancer is another severe obstructive respiratory disease, and it's the number one cancer killer of both women and men. Lung cancer causes tumors in the epithelial lining of the bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli. There are several risk factors for developing lung cancer, with cigarette smoke being the number one risk factor. Even secondhand smoke can increase the risk for lung cancer one and a half more times than a non-smoker. Genetics, radiation, and chemical exposure are also risk factors. Now, the thing with lung cancer is it can be hard to detect early on because the symptoms are so nonspecific and can vary amongst individuals. Due to the developing tumors that form in the airways, this causes the airways to narrow. And of course, this can cause the patient to have trouble breathing. Other symptoms include coughing, blood streaked phlegm, reoccurring infections, and chest pain. Now, as the tumors grow, a patient can experience infiltrated lungs. An infiltrate can be a dense substance such as pus, blood, or protein lingering in the lungs. Lung cancer in some cases can result in fluid of the pleural cavity, causing alveoli to collapse and hindering the lung's ability to stretch. Both cases can cause the symptoms that we see in restrictive lung diseases like the ones we mentioned earlier. Treatment for lung cancer really depends on the class of the tumor, such as its cell type and metastasis, which is its ability to spread to other parts of the body. But these treatments usually include surgical removal, radiation therapy, or chemotherapy. 
Well, that's the end of our lecture on respiratory diseases. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And check out the link below for some cool merchandise. Thanks for watching.